My name is Nate Rusva, and this question is for uh, John Nord. I was just curious, um, how was it wrestling over in Japan back in the 80s? Oh, I suppose you guys did. Oh, well, I don't. Yeah, in the 80s over there, uh, well, the first time you do it, it goes like this. You show up and you grab onto these big Japanese guys that you think are wussies <laughs> and they kind of kick your ass around and get your mind right a little bit. There's, if, you, if you think because you shove your weight around over here that it's going to happen in Japan and it don't. There's been a lot of wrestling personalities. Everybody here on this side of the table will attest. You get humbled real quick over there because uh, uh, they just pretty much beat you up. But, you know, like most Japan stories, it's timing on the money, you know. The best years in our lives, it seems like most of us here, are when the money was just seemed too good to be true. And Stan Hansen, I remember in, uh, actually that was the early 90s, he had called me on Thanksgiving Day and and I think the most I ever got over there was 2500 or three grand or something a week. And Stan called me and, I, and it said to Kitchen Tilly, he goes, yeah, John, uh, uh, Giant Baba wants to uh, hire you, but geez, I kind of got bad news. I said, what? He goes, I can only get you 67.50 a week. <laughs> and I went, I can live with that. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, we all got our stories, but the one that brings to mind is uh, my friend, became good friends with Frank Brody, and I seen him and Jimmy Snook uh, uh, walk off uh, the train uh, on the night before that every, all these guys have heard of. They walked off uh, before the big main event match, and I think that was 84 or 5, but uh, it's eye-opening if you can get back alive and don't drink too much. <laughs> Thanks, okay, we're going to take a couple more questions. I have another one here from someone.